a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive. This is part 47. Figuring out the best way to mount the saddle tank, starting by painting the mounting bracket. I need to make some internal blocks to reinforce the area which will support the weight. After applying the edge primer in a previous episode, it's time to apply the top coat. This is satin black paint. It's not the usual stuff that I use, but it does spray okay. I'm not using the HMG satin black, well I've run out of it. When I painted the cladding for this boiler, which is quite large, I did use rather a lot of paint. So for this job, I'm using high coat, and it is actually quite a good paint to use. This is a shot of the paint drying, so it's still shiny. Once it dries, it will go a bit duller than this. Leaving the paint to dry in the outer part of the workshop, I'm now at the workbench in the main one. I'm just playing about with random pieces of brass. The only bit of brass I'm interested in is this thick bar that I'm going to chop into two blocks. For the main tank support, which attaches it to the bracket, I'm going to use steel. That will be a lot stronger. What I need to do is chop this thick piece of brass bar into two pieces that will be fitted inside the tank to reinforce the area where the mountings will be fixed to the tank. I'm using my trusty bandsaw that I've had for, wait for it, 45 years. And yesterday I went to see a man called Andrew, who has a YouTube channel by the interesting name of Model Engineering Adventures. Just type the three words that are on screen if you want to have a look at what he does on his channel. Andrew also had one of these bandsaws. It was a different colour with a different name on it, but it was identical to this one. I must admit, I was a bit envious of some of his equipment. He has a Warco milling machine, which is miles better than the one I have. And it even has Auto Travis. Such luxury. I have to wind a handle on this one. I shouldn't complain though, this is a Nairock milling machine, which is Korean, spelt backwards. And I really can't complain about it, because it does the job. What I'm doing here is squaring off the pieces of brass. I clamped them in the machine vise, but before I tightened the machine vise, I used a set square to make sure that they were perfectly at 90 degrees to the base of the vise. This means, as I machine across the top of the two pieces of brass, the tops and sides will be at a perfect 90 degrees to each other. Once I'd done that, I simply turned the parts over with the machined area against the bottom of the machine vise. And this time I didn't need to use a set square. With the two pieces of brass sat in the machine vise with the two machined areas on the bottom of the vise. Once I've finished machining this side, the two pieces of brass will be exactly the same size as each other. Now in the outer part of the workshop on my four inch belt sander, I'm just cleaning up the brass to remove the tarnish and the sharp edges. This is a very easy job and because the piece of brass is quite thick and I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it on the belt sander, it's not getting hot. First I cleaned up one of the blocks and then I turned my attention to the other one. Exactly the same principle for both, obviously. After this treatment, both of the blocks have a really nice brushed finish. As I will show later on in the video, the blocks fit inside the tank. What I need to do now is drill some holes in these and thread the holes for BA because they will be held to the tank using brass 4BA countersunk machine screws. To be honest, my marking out is rubbish, but I always seem to get good results despite the way I do it. These blocks are not high precision components. It's not a part of an internal combustion engine, a satellite or a rocket. Watch this next part carefully and you'll see where the block is going to go, inside the tank. The piece of brass I'm holding in my left hand is to simulate the steel support, but I don't know where it's going to go yet. I can only find that out by putting the tank in place on the engine and taking some measurements. And now I think it is top tip time. I need to drill four mounting holes in these brass blocks and they all need to be exactly the same as each other. I made a felt tip pen mark in each corner 
but I'm not following the position of the felt tip pen mark. All I have to do is first of all using a much shorter drill than normal or even a centre drill. As long as the drill doesn't wander about everything's fine. This is a childishly simple job to do. I could make a jig, I could use measuring equipment, but the easiest way to do it is the way I'm showing. I will eventually thread these holes I'm going to be drilling for BA. So I'm using a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill, which is tapping size for 4 BA. All I have to do is position the block in position and drill one of the holes. Once I've done that, I turn the block over. By the way the block feels in the machine vise, I can tell when it's in the right place, so then I drill another hole. This part of the clip is much later on in the process. Now I'm, drilling, uh, now I'm drilling the holes all the way through. Drilling holes in the corner of pieces of metal like this is very simple and you soon get into the rhythm of it and it's very quick. You end up with two holes in the correct position on one side and then you turn the part over and as long as you make sure that the brass block is in exactly the same position relative to the vice jaws for each drilling operation you really can't go wrong. Most of this video is running at a much higher speed than normal. Because once you've seen me drill one hole, what's the point in labouring it so I have to drill a lot more holes in real time? These clips are running at eight times normal speed. Finally, I end up with two brass blocks with holes at each corner, and these are quite accurate. In the next episode, I will be fitting the cab and the tank to the engine, all very loosely. It will tell me where these blocks need to go on the inside of the tank. I'll be doing quite a lot of measuring and alignment. And when everything's in the right position, I will draw a line underneath the tank. Then all I will have to do is align the mark on the tank with the mark in the centre of the block. And when I hold the block firmly in position against the underside of the saddle tank, I'll be able to use my scriber through each of the holes in turn to make a mark on the saddle tank, then drill a hole clearance size for 4BA, which will allow me to mount the blocks on the inside of the tank. Before tightening everything up, I will use some sealant between the blocks and the tank itself. Once I've made the front tank mountings, all I have to do is drill and tap some holes through the tank into the blocks to secure the mounting bracket in place. I'm ending this video the way I started it. This bit is where you put the water into the tank, and I'm currently thinking about making the filler cap. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.